Welcome in to another video pertaining to Caltopo. Today's topic, I labeled it as LIDAR, but really we're going to be taking a look at a feature called Custom Source. I'm going to show you LIDAR. If you've never been exposed to what LIDAR looks like on a map, it's going to amaze you. And if you have been exposed to it but don't know how to bring it into Caltopo, then we're going to be talking about that in another video. I was going to try to make one big video on what lidar and some of these other custom sources can be and how to do it but the video is just going to be too long so i'm going to break it up into two today's short video is just going to be an introduction to the things that you can do with custom source maps in caltopo this i'm working on my desktop and you do have to have a paid version the pro that's 50 dollars a year currently but then i'm also going to show you uh, some of the other features that you can bring into it so Let's get started. So I have Caltopo open and I'm signed in. You can see my name up here in the top right. I do not have a map open. This is a blank map. It comes up with uh, Map Builder Topo. That's the base layer that's going to open up for typical maps. And I'm going to just pick an area here in the Red River Gorge um, just so we can have something to, to kind of look at. I thought we might do, yeah. We will do this red dotted line here is Osborne Bend Loop, and this is Copperas Creek. Come up here to the falls. It's a beautiful hike. So first of all, we're going to just take a look at Map Builder Topo. Like I said, this is the base layer coming in, and if you zoom in, you get somewhat of a 3D effect. You get the contour lines that will help you everything, help see everything. Over here on the right-hand side, I'm going to bring in another base layer. If I click on that, click the down button, and go down to the bottom, and this is labeled as your layers. I'm going to pull in LIDAR as a um, first layer of a stack base layer. And the opacity is set to zero. I'm going to bump that all the way up to 100 right quick so we can just kind of see what it looks like. I'll work this back and forth so you can see the difference. But you can look in here as it loads. You can see much more detail trying to navigate through some of this rough stuff especially if you were trying to do some, anything that's off trail, if you're trying to do some cross country hikes and such, LIDAR is critical in my opinion, even if you're not, I think it's, I think it's just wonderful option to have to be able to look. As we move around, you can see, I'm going to move my cursor, my hand along the trail and you can actually see where the trail has been worn in. Here's another one that comes off this way. And around, I think this one goes over to to the cliff lines. I want to lower capacity down to zero so that we can see the trail. Yeah, so this goes over to uh, the cliff lines. This is the main trail, Osborne Bend. And just so that you can kind of see the difference, we'll take a look at this little area here. We'll bump it back up to a hundred. Yeah, look at that detail that it gives you. I think it's pretty neat that it can actually see the trail that has been worn in by all the hikers going up and around. Yeah, you may say, okay, that's Map Builder Topo. What about a what about the old Topo lines or the old Topo maps? Let's pull in that. This is scan Topo. And that's what we navigated by for years and years. But several years back. One of the features that came out on, um, even on Google, I think on Google it's called terrain, but here, if you do a stack layer and you come down to shaded relief and I'll bump it up to a hundred and I'll work it back a little bit so that you can kind of see, see, as you put that normal in, it kind of gives it a 3d effect, which was wonderful, wonderful back then. I mean, it really, really helped you out whenever you went across country trying to figure these things out or trying to plan a route, evaluating a trail. It just, it gave you a 3D effect and it, it helped tremendously in seeing what the trail, where it's going and how it worked. But as you can see, bump it all the way up. As you can see, there is no difference or no consideration in the 
uh, quality and the details that you can see. LIDAR 100% versus shaded relief 100%. And I have to back out because you can't zoom in that much on shaded relief. And I'll flip back and forth between these two so, so that you can see it. The difference is just night and day. So LIDAR is not an option in CalTOPO. You have to add that map source into CalTOPO. And the way you do it, if you click on add, you come down here to custom source. That is where you add LIDAR feature into it. And it'll pull it from the ARC servers, GIS servers out there. The one I have pulled in is for just the state of Kentucky. If it may take a few minutes, I'll try to zoom out, but it, there we go. It may take a minute or two for it to load. So the layer that I have pulled in is just for the state of Kentucky. If you live in a different state, then you could probably follow the same steps that I'm going to throw. All you have to do is find the LIDAR option at the state level or a national level and then be able to pull it in as a source. Now, one issue that you have is that these custom sources, this right here, this custom source, you cannot download for offline use, but we'll talk a little bit how to work around that in the next video that's coming up. So be sure and subscribe so that you'll know whenever that next video comes out, if this is something that interests you on how to get set up. Now, the custom source can do a lot more than just LIDAR. Let me clear my map up here. We'll get rid of shaded relief and we'll get rid of LIDAR. Some of the other custom source maps that I brought in, high resolution, zoom in. It takes a little bit because these are large files, but this is high resolution that I got off of the state. I think this one's state. As opposed to, let me change this to an aerial view. Let's go global imaging. Now I'm going to take my higher resolution down to zero. And that's not bad. I've used this quite a bit, actually, in it, both in out hiking in the woods and planning a hike and in my work as a real estate appraiser. But you can see there's just no comparison between the standard global imaging and then the high resolution that you bring in from the state. So this is another custom source that I bring in. I use it all the time. Let me get rid of that. Let me zoom back out here. I'm going to just go back to Map Builder Topo right quick. Let me zoom out. And then I am going to bring in over here on the right hand side it has your layers. This is this is not all, but this is most of the custom source map layers that I brought in from either the federal level or the state level. And one of them was uh, Kentucky counties. I'll zoom out so that the, hopefully we can get the whole state in there. There we go. So these county boundaries uh, was brought in from this, the state uh, GIS server. The other one I brought in, or another one I should say, is roadways. This is from the state. And this is the most up-to-date roads and names. So as you zoom in, they'll bring in, if it's a new development, as soon as it hits the state server, it'll bring it in as well. So I use this one all the time as well, trying to find some of these little, I call them driveways that 911 has put a, a name to, but it just doesn't hit Google and Maps and all that. 
but it does hit the state servers through 911. So as soon as it hits the state server, it's I can be able to pull it in and I'll be able to see what all these little names are, official names of everything. So the roadways is good if you're out there traveling. Another one that, let me get rid of that, reset my map here. Ran across this one and I thought it was pretty cool. It's called uh, Frontier Trails, uh, major and minor. I'll go ahead and bring in the the major trails. But this shows you where um, the warrior path came in and went. Shows you where uh, Boone's Trace and all that. The Wilderness Road. That's what I called Boone Trace, I'm sorry. The Wilderness Road went and how it split off and how it made it all the way up to Louisville. And then it has a minor trails as well. So stuff like that interest, you can find that type of data out on some of these GIS servers, ARC servers, and be able to link back into CalTOPO and be able to bring them in as a layer. To me, that's just, I don't know, that's just cool. Waterways, creeks, um, current water levels, all that kind of stuff uh, you can bring in. Here's another one that I use all the time. It's uh, city boundaries. I have my base layer set for Google Maps. I can do this on my desktop. Google Maps is not available on the mobile. So I'm on my desktop and I have availability. So I pulled it in. We're used to seeing it. So I can hit this city boundaries layer that I brought in from the uh, state level. And it tells me exactly where the city boundaries are. So if I'm doing a real estate appraisal on something that's um, questionable if it's in city limits or not, I can pull this in and it will show me where, if that house sets um, on Bedford Road here, if it's technically in the city or not in the city. And there's others. There's many, many other options out there that you can bring in. So one more layer that I found out there, I was doing a little study in on the regions of Kentucky. So let me bring it in. It is called physiographic regions of Kentucky. Let me turn the opacity up on it. Let it. There we go. So you can see the different regions and you can match up the color code with, with what they gave you on the server. You can look them up. But so if you're out studying this type of stuff and want to put eyeballs to what the regions actually look like when you cross from one to the other, like whenever you cross from uh, get out of the knobs regions, which is, I live right on the edge of it it's so obvious that you're changing from the knobs to the outer bluegrass region by what the ground looks like or what the, you know, the features that you're seeing. So I just thought it was neat, but again, just some things you can do with custom source. We'll go back to LIDAR, close that on it because to me that's, the most important stuff that you're going to see out here hiking. I'm just going to zoom in to, I don't even know where I'm at on the map, but just to give you an idea of what it looks like again. So, and there's many, many options. I know I said that before, but there's tons of options out there and we'll kind of look through those in the next video. Uh, so again, be sure and subscribe and uh, we'll take a look at everything. If you got any questions, uh, put them in the comments, send me something and, um, and we'll take a look on how to, go out to these servers, find what you're kind of looking for, and then be able to bring that into CalTOPO. Till next time, be safe.